Well, it's now time. The 2017 PFA Free Agency. Now, there's actually two stages of free agency. One pre-draft and one post-draft. And this is the pre-draft one, as the next video will be about the draft. But anyways, here are all the free agents that were signed over the last five days. So first up is Henry Lee, a running back who was with the Rays last year, who just signed with the Louisville Saints for five years for $20 million, as that backfield of the Louisville Saints got a lot more um, balanced. Maybe he'll bring some stability to the running game, as the Louisville Saints might possibly take a quarterback with the first overall pick in the 2017 draft. After that, we go to another running back, Gerald Sparks, who is very young, 21 years old, who was just on the Sabres last year, and the Milwaukee Lakers picked him up for four years for $5,200,000, as he's going to back up their star running back, Stephen Salisbury. He has not played a single down in PFA, not even one grant me touch yet. So it's going to be kind of interesting to see what's going to happen. Perhaps, maybe he might eventually be the star running back for the Lakers. We'll have to wait and see. Or maybe this will help Jumpstar's career to go with someone else sometime in the future. We'll have to wait and see. But hopefully good luck for him. Next up is center Andrew Brown, who was on the Hawaii Phantoms last year. He is now going to be on the Hawks for five years and $8 million. And he'll hopefully provide some stability for the Hawks' offensive line as they might try and make a push for a playoff hunt next year. Next up is Newton Castello, who is an offensive ta tackle from the Hawks. And the Phoenix Storm, who have a terrible offensive line, picked him up for six years for an out an and an unbelievable $16.8 million. So far, it's the biggest contract of anyone to free agency, although I don't think that's going to be the highest at the end. However, this is going to be kind of a big risk for Phoenix, as he is 35, so who knows how long he'll last. But hey, he did a good season with the Hawks last year, so hopefully he can keep that up. But they got to be kind of concerned with that age, especially with that defense. Still doing pretty good, but also, of course, has its own limited time as well. So hopefully this will work out for them. Then, much to the surprise of everyone, we had a quarterback sign in the free agency. And that was Robert Richardson, who was the backup quarterback for Cody Perry back up in Atlanta. And he's staying in the division as he's going down south more to the Tampa Tropics at, for seven years and $21 million. As he's probably going to be the starter over Joseph Sander at the moment. And with this... Because they have the third overall pick, so maybe they're not going to go for quarterback at this point. But eventually they are going to have to because Robert is 33. So he's quite up there in age, so he's not going to be the future. So who knows what Tampa's planning, but hopefully they get right because they got really turned that team around. Next up, we go right back to running back as Washington Americans signed Darren Waldrop. Another player picked up from Buffalo as he signed for three years for three million. And he's in a very, very balanced um, running back field with Bradley Hunter and George Knoll. So he might be the backup behind them. And of course, being 35, he's not going to probably make it to all that three million. So we'll have to wait and see. But he could be a solid backup for either one of them in case one of them goes down to injury. And if Washington wants any shot to make it to PFA Bowl 2, they need to have a solid running game for him to be able to do so. So this is very important. And then the biggest free agency signing was from the Cincinnati Colts as they signed Terry Carter, an offensive guard, and he was the best player in free agency with an overall of 79. And they signed him to a big deal, six years for $24 million. As the Cincinnati Colts had like the, one, no, I don't know about the worst offensive line, but they definitely were terrible when it came to offensive guards. He will provide a major, major benefit to that team as he is a former player with the San Francisco Union. And he only allowed one sack in his start in, in San Francisco. So he's a major contributor, hopefully for the Colts. He hopefully will be the case because this team needs a lot of work and hopefully Terry Carr will be a major step to it. Then we finally go over to defense as the Houston Twister signed Mark Knox for five years for $10 million. Mark Knox, a former player with the Seattle Quakes who was very good last year, 49 tackles and four picks. So he was really good last year, although he's 
actually only just average compared to other um, free safeties, which is quite saying a lot about the free safeties in the league. But hopefully he'll provide a major stabilizing factor to the um, Houston's defense, which was very inconsistent. Matter of fact, the whole team was inconsistent last year. And we'll see how well he manages with that team. And in a very interesting twist, we have a player that refused to come back to their team. All of a sudden, suddenly decided to do that. And that's Pat Rogers, an offensive tackle with the New Orleans Jizz, who they tried to re-sign during the, um, um, at the beginning of the season, but he refused to do so. And after no one seemed to really want him, despite being a very good tackle, he accept, he finally accepted the Jazz's offer of four years for $24 million. So how about that? Everyone else has either been never played at all or have been on a former team that went to another team. So far, he's the only one that actually went back to their former team after refusing to re-sign with them during the, se the re-signing period. And finally, is we're going up to Seattle as they signed another quarterback, Matthew Nolaton, who was the backup for uh, Miami's um, quarterback, Anthony McCormick. He didn't start a game at all last year, but he did throw over 50, almost 60 passes and completed 30 plus of them. Got two touchdowns and one pick in the um, times that he did play a bit. And they signed him for three years for three million as a possible backup to Ken Rodriguez, who was the backup to Dwight Lovett, who they released after signing Matthew. So, looks like there's going to be a quarterback controversy or a challenge for the starting job for Seattle next year. Will it be Ken Rodriguez, who was the backup last year, who did a pretty solid job as the bat as um the two times he started last year on after Dwight, or will it be Matthew all of a sudden out of nowhere, who's the backup for right now, all of a sudden come in there and take the number one spot? We'll have to wait and see what happens in Seattle. And with that, that is the end of the pre-draft free agency. There will still be another one afterwards, but after that, we'll have to wait and see who will be signed or not because most of the activity is going to be pre-draft because the, all the best players are available. And I'm hoping for that will help a whole bunch of teams get better for next year. And then, of course, the next video will be the 2017 draft. And, oh, baby, I can't wait for that. All the excitement of the first round. And then, of course, I'll do a show to um, recap of each draft that each team had each round. So tune in soon for that.